I like roguelikes. I really like roguelikes. While I can't boast to having played many of the old classics, I can at least say I've racked up well over 100 hours playing The Binding of Isaac. I've also put a worrying amount of time into Rogue Legacy. As soon as I discovered that one actually, my PS Vita was pretty much doomed to an existence as a Rogue Legacy machine because I certainly wasn't going to play anything else on it. I also really like Spelunky, despite the fact I'm no good at Spelunky. Despite my ineptitude, I still enjoy playing it, and other roguelikes, because it's familiar, but also refreshing at the same time. Because the structure changes with each new run, you find yourself encountering familiar, known components arranged in different ways, and there's something oddly soothing about that presentation. Going through the mines of Spelunky or the first few levels of The Binding of Isaac is oddly soothing, yet never stale. There's an element of surprise to it, but you also know you're going to breeze through those levels despite their changing structure. However, that's not to say I automatically like all roguelikes. There's a balance to be struck with games like this, and for my money, it has to be just right. I didn't gel with The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, for instance, even though it's made from the same building blocks as one of my all-time favourite games. Something about the room sizes and a few of the new enemies skewed the experience somehow. It put me off my stride, and despite trying for a good five hours now, I just can't get on with it. Don't Starve, similarly, had too many survival elements to it for me to enjoy it in the same way I do other roguelikes. What I'm trying to get across here is that when it comes to roguelikes, I'm pretty picky. Now enter the Gungeon, that's my kind of roguelike. This game's been shown off quite a lot in the past, so I won't dwell too long on explaining the setup, but basically you enter the eponymous Gungeon and progress through a series of rooms, shooting everything in your way as you search for both treasure chests and the end of level boss. Rinse, repeat, die, restart. You get the picture. While I found the gun-heavy premise a bit off-putting before playing Enter the Gungeon, it actually does a great job of making it feel just right. The enemies die with a satisfying pop, and the movement mechanics are really fluid, which is handy because Gungeon also plays around at being a shmup far more than its contemporaries. At times, the sheer amount of gunfire on the screen at once really demands your skill and attention, and your positioning is far more important than in The Binding of Isaac, for instance. The guns are really well designed, by the way, which is great, because there are a lot of them. In the early hours, of course, it's fun to discover new ones and find out what they do. The t-shirt gun is a personal favourite thus far. <laughs> That said, I'm also looking forward to the stage when I'm comfortable with most of them and can tell at a glance what each item drop means for the chances of this particular run. Because like all good roguelikes, Enter the Gungeon is a world you have to learn to read. The aptly named Amanomicon is a good starting point, they really like bullet puns by the way, giving you a comprehensive index of the guns you've unlocked and the enemies you've encountered thus far. Useful as it is though, the Amanomicon will only carry you so far. There are all sorts of secrets tucked away in Enter the Gungeon just waiting for you to work them out, or to go on the inevitable wiki that's going to spring up once the game launches. The appeal of Enter the Gungeon is in the robust gameplay, sure, but it's also in the calm sense of contemplation you have going on in the background while playing. It's in those moments when you encounter something new and test its boundaries. You poke at it to see how it reacts, and you commit that behaviour to your understanding of the game world. That understanding swells, and you get better at dealing with that game world as you progress and slowly become unstoppable. That sense, that chewy, intangible feeling of quiet study, isn't unique to Enter the Gungeon, it's present in every good roguelike, but it is hard to get right. And while my runs tend to end on just the first couple of levels thus far, I feel reassured that the balance is there. That balance also extends to other elements in the game world, like the loot chest system. There are two guaranteed treasure chests in every level, each requiring a key to open. Talking to artist Joe Harty while getting some hands-on time earlier this week, he told me they didn't want to force players to leave chests unopened and thereby miss out on some goodies. So, if you come across one of these chests and don't have a key, you can just shoot it instead. There's a solid chance you won't get anything this way, of course, but you can at least try. It's a pretty good example of all those little contracts people make with roguelikes while playing them. They're the little quirks, the little moments of chin-scratching contemplation that make them more fun. Do I shoot the chest now, or go looking for a key and maybe end up with less health going into the boss fight? Or, as in The Binding of Isaac, do I deal with the devil and take this item, or is that extra heart container more valuable? The answer, obviously, is shoot the chest, even if you feel like an idiot afterward when you get nothing. Because that sense of uncertainty, that roll of the dice, 
that's where the best bits of roguelikes actually lie. So yeah, enter the gungeon. It's a good roguelike. While we're talking about those actually, Rogue Legacy inspired me to make a feature on games that remember when you die and try to make something out of it, if you want to watch that. If that doesn't tickle your fancy though, Eve has been playing Stardew Valley recently and has some very strong opinions about the right time to build some housing for your chickens. Ian, meanwhile, has been talking about shooting people in the testicles in Sniper Elite 4. Because, of course he has. No matter what you end up clicking though, thanks for watching and please do like and subscribe for plenty more from Eurogamer. Bye!